It's October. It's time for the five scariest hidden secrets in the Batman Arkham games. That's John Cena. Don't do that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Are you excited for October? Dude, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, wake me up when September ends. And, well, it ended. That wasn't an old saying. It was a Green Day song. No, no, that's uh, Socrates. (laughs) I think you're right. Number five, Man Bat. And a few events around him in Arkham Knight. So first off, you have Man Bat's escape. Because on October 31st, 2015, if you set the internal clock of your system to that date or you game the game (laughs) to make it think that you're living in the past, really. If you return to the... uh, Well, actually, I was going to jump ahead of myself. If you return to the GCPD, Man Bat's gone. He's gone. He's left. He got out. Yeah, he escaped. And that's, uh, I think, one of the craziest things is that... And I don't really know how people found this. I guess you just had to log into the game on the 31st. Probably just Calendar Man PTSD. That's true. (laughs) That's true. It was kind of traumatizing. But yeah, it's it's super cool because you go back and after you had locked him up, it was one of the more uh, haunting experiences of catching him and like that side mission itself. Because it, I mean, the first time that he jumps over the ledge and scares you as you're traversing around the city was one of the most scared I've ever been in an entire in a game in my life. It was un, an unbelievable jump scare, and so the, then you capture him and the experience of getting him. It was it was a great side mission. But bringing him uh, into the GCPD and then going back later and seeing that, it's just a really cool detail that they added in. And it's it's interesting that um, that he's able to get out. On the, and it's, I don't know, it's cool. Well, and there is another thing tied into that as well, because if you return to the lab, Kirk's lab, his wife's body is missing now. His wife, who he presum- presumably killed. And instead, there are the words, forever my love, written on a broken television. So a lot of people think that she actually went on to become She-Bat after this. And if you think about it, both Man-Bat and She-Bat have escaped now at the end. Man-Bat's gone, and his wife is gone as well. So there's a lot of different ways you could kind of look at this, but essentially the two of them are gone forever, my love, you know, Mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. There's some... This is deeply romantic, honestly. It really is. There's a lot of that in these games, you know, with uh, Mr. Freeze, too. There's a nice little romantic send-off at the end. Um, let's see, I mean, Lucius Fox and Bruce Wayne, there's some good stuff going on there. So. Yeah, that's very true, a lot of chemistry. Yeah, no doubt. But there is a lot there, definitely, that I think was very interesting. That brings us to our next entry, which is number four! Play. Arkham Asylum. Because there are some hidden things going on in the background, as Scarecrow actually does have a hidden little base in the asylum ahead of the events of actually even encountering him really Mm -hmm. it's down at the bottom of the elevator shaft if we get down there we can find that he had sort of a little lab a little test area here where he was sort of doing his thing at the bottom of the asylum without people knowing super cool yeah there's like plants and i think there's like mushrooms and stuff growing in there there's like some really uh just really intricate details that you see in there which was interesting. I think you have to drop down into like a little elevator and then there's a vent that you crawl through and then you see it. A so, Batman-sized vent. Correct. Actually. Conveniently. It's great. And uh, yeah, no, it was it was a really cool Easter egg. And Scarecrow, uh, at that point, you do wonder like, how is he so ready for like the events of the asylum? You know, how is he so prepared? How was how did he have all this stuff ready to go? So it was, it was cool to see just a nice little, uh, you know, Easter egg because he had plenty of them throughout the series. Yeah, and it sort of shows that he was ready for the asylum break in a way, or, yeah. or an opportunity to start being Scarecrow again. Really, mm-hmm. number three. three. So the next one that we jump into is actually Calendar Man. There are plenty of hidden Calendar Man secrets. Some of them are weird and creepy. Some of them are scary. This one is just sort of a creepy foreboding one. And that is actually that if you set the date to December 13th, 2004 in Arkham City, which is actually when Rocksteady Studio, who made the games, was formed, you can talk to Calendar Man and he will say, Well, well, well. And on today of all days, do you remember my early work? Flawed, but it showed promise. Just like you, as your skills improved, I perfected mine. Starting with seasons 
And moving through the weeks, I became stronger, my work more elaborate. Days were the secret, Batman, and the end of days is coming. I was there at your beginning, and I will be there at your end. And this ties into quite a few things, actually. There's the fact that Calendar Man was there at Batman's beginning in this universe. And what I mean by that is in Arkham Origins, in one of the very first scenes, Julian Day, Calendar Man, is going to be executed. And he actually leaves the execution chamber, you know, and you see that from Batman's point of view. That is Batman's beginning in this universe, or the beginning we are able to see. Now, in his end, though... He is actually there during the Nightfall Protocol. You can see him, he's actually tucked away in the crowd of reporters and onlookers as Nightfall Protocol is activated in Arkham Knight and Wayne Manor explodes, which is really interesting because this is sort of a final, not a goodbye, but almost a tie-in between the entire timeline from both the beginning to the end with Calendar Man there, with Rocksteady sort of having this plan, with WB Games getting their own shout out in a way in this game. There's a lot there that I think really needs unpacking, but it's really interesting and it is just sort of foreboding and creepy. I wouldn't say it's super scary. It's just kind of a creepy little skin crawling Easter egg. Yeah, and they had a, a plan. And I think that's what's really cool is, is you see that from the beginning that Rocksteady had a plan of what they were going to do with this and given i mean maybe that's just the impression that you get and that they were making a silent scene where it went but i think that you could argue that they had a plan with the warden's secret room and obviously that you know the the links to arkham city what would then become arkham city so uh, there's just it's it's kind of like you said foreboding that they had a plan from the beginning they show that easter egg of basically rocksteady's uh, origins and then this is where calendar man is you're gonna see him again you will see him again and if you don't pay attention, you don't think that you see him, but you just see like the tattoos on his mm -hmm. skull as he's looking in at Wayne Manor as it's exploding, which is definitely creepy. And it fits his character really well. He's just kind of a weird, kind of pacing, creepy tell stories guy, you know? Yeah, he's is very odd. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. So the next one that we have is actually in Arkham City. It is throughout the entire game. There's quite a few things with this one, and that's Scarecrow's presence in general. Yeah, yeah, there, there's quite a bit. So, I mean, you start, you see the Easter egg on top of, like, the, the bridge thing, kind of right before the steel mill. You'll see his mask there. It's an Easter egg. It's like a, a Riddler scannable item as well. So that's uh, one thing that you see right away. And then uh, right after that, you also see there's, like, transmissions throughout the game and, like, codes that you have to decrypt, kind of telling of that he's going to come back and that he's going to have a vengeance and uh, basically envelop the entirety of Gotham in fear, which is what we see at night. And then uh, lastly, we see his, the, the final transmission really is going to that specific location right in front of the steel mill, uh, kind of Joker's fun house. Yeah, area. that boat in the, in the water. Yes, yeah, right, kind of, yeah, it's, it's uh, right in front there. And if you sit in the right spot, go down, kneel, you'll get kind of prompted into decrypting something. It opens a secret door, which was one of, I think, the hardest Easter eggs to find in the game, for sure. And uh, you go down there and you see some really, that's I think where it gets creepy, is you see this kind of dead body. He then twitches, freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, he screams. screams. Yeah. And then dies. Right. Terrifying. And then you see like there's, you know, bugs and these like experiments going on. And it forces you into first person too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see also like the Falcone shipping thing there too, which is a cool little reference. But there's, there's a lot of, uh, it's just a very haunting scene when you go down there. I think the music changes to a bit more of a high pitched kind of creepy tone as well so i mean they really did a good job with that one yeah they did it really shows that scarecrow is still alive and doing things in this universe and that he will be coming back which he does uh although the effectiveness of him coming back is de debated by arkham knight fans but sure. he did come back and he did envelop the city in fear and he's a really interesting co common villain he throughout is. the core trilogy number, number one, one. Number, number one it's number one Number one. The last one we have is one that you may have seen before if you follow the channel, which is the fact that there is a galaxy conquering villain hidden right behind plain sight in Batman Arkham Knight, A Matter of Family. You're playing as Batgirl, you're going around the amusement park, um, or the carnival, and you can actually find this little 
Batgirl sized vent for once. Fantastic. You know, you get in there and you start to hear a noise if you move in here. And that's one thing I didn't mention in the actual Easter egg that we talked about is you hear a high pitched noise the closer you get to this. There's a high pitched psychic sound. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. And as you go through the vent, you hear it louder and louder, and you come out and you look to your left, and there's two tanks. One is empty. One has a massive starfish with an eye on it. And you might think, well, that's that's a weird thing. And the closer you get to it, the louder that high-pitched psychic shrill gets. And what this is, is Starro the Conqueror. This is a galaxy-conquering villain from the Justice League and from DC Comics in general, who you can see was used as an attraction, actually, at one point, or was going to be. Uh, in this carnival, because the carnival never really got off the ground after the dude's daughter died. But essentially, this was going to be used as an attraction, and it shows that he did create these smaller starfish spores that could be worn on someone's face, because you see that on the performer's face. And the interesting thing about this is, in the comics, he uses those to control other people. He can control people from superheroes just down to normal citizens and people. He can conquer entire worlds this way and make them just a Starro world, essentially. And the only thing separating him from the Arkham universe is a thin layer of glass. That's it. His character model moves around. He's clearly alive. He sort of breathes a little bit. He lights up and, you know pulses this was a really really creepy in-depth easter egg actually it really was and yeah i mean you see even in justice league like he he conquers or he conquers i guess he more so just takes over the mind of superman and that's when you really start to see during batman beyond yeah yes. they, during oh, yeah, the, the beyond, calling the right. justice league episodes yeah so i mean he's he's capable of quite a bit and like you said the the high-pitched music and things getting just more intense and you see this this really, if you don't know, it's just like, oh, it's like a cool starfish, whatever. But if you if you know that that's Starro, that's a very daunting kind of, I mean, this little thing could essentially take over the world, potentially, if, yeah. if it was set free. So it's, it's a very, it, it's well done, and the fact that it's kind of breathing, and it's just a small pane of glass that's separating it from escaping and just getting let loose on the world... It's definitely a little creepy. Yeah, it's very weird and creepy and uh, puts the events of even that universe in perspective a little bit. You know, you have all these things going on with Batman and, and Joker and Scarecrow. and These are real threats, but in the background, you also have potential threats that could destroy the entire world. Mm -hmm. Just sort of sitting there waiting. So it's very creepy when you think about it. But these are our five scariest or spookiest or wooiest uh, secrets in the Batman Arkham games. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. What are your favorite scariest or creepy little wooey secrets that you want to share? It's October. It's a fun month of scary Halloween stuff. There's going to be some on the channel as well. I do want to mention, I think Nate and I are going to review some of the Halloween movies and just some stuff like that. Hopefully doing a couple more scary lists, you know, just in commemoration of one of the best times of the year of course we'd love your feedback we'll see you in the next one please subscribe if you are not already have a fantastic day check out the discord the twitter the instagram the patreon and the reddit and my phone just buzzed we'll see you later